More specifically, in the Schreiber formation, during the TST, we see some very interesting things. We see evidence for mounded deposits. You can see here on this seismic line that there's evidence for mound being formed. And those TST mound can also see, be seen on a seismic amplitude map here. You can see the mound structure here in the subsurface of Oman. This is a beautiful uh, seismic amplitude map by uh, Hank Droste, published in 2010, where the mounded structure at the TST are quite visible. So what are those mounded structure? I mean, this is quite intriguing, you know, that you have those carbonate mounds forming. Well, those mounds are probably algal platform complex. They're probably algal mounds. In fact, they're known as bacinella, and they are carbonate-producing algal, um, uh, algal organisms that are, that are quite typical for the lower Cretaceous, and they can be quite uh, important producers. So you have these, these mounded structures forming here, and in fact, we can see them here in the Halhukuf. Behind me, you see beautiful examples of these mounds. You can see here one such example of the mound, so that's the, the Bacinella mound here, surrounded by sediments, and you see the sediments is cross-stratified around the mound. So this is a small-scale mound, but you can have mound that can be tens of meters um, across because they can coalesce. And these mounds, surprisingly, even though they're microbial, have quite a bit of porosity and decent permeability. Uh, and so they are actually important reservoirs, as we will see later. So now what happens when you go into the high stand system tract in general? Well, the, in general, in Ubit system, you would tend to have broader tidal flats, so much bigger tidal flats. And in fact, here at the uh, at Al Hukuf, we can see lots of evidence for tidal flats all around us. These uh, these shallow water carbonates, because the Hukuf was quite at the back of this carbonate system, it's surrounded by probably what uh, are some of the most spectacular lower Cretaceous tidal uh, flat deposits. And I had a PhD student spending three and a half years looking at them, and we found a lot of really interesting heterogeneity in those rocks. You also have a more pronounced lagoon uh, during the high stand system tracks, and the reef tend to be again at their best. So we have most production uh, of carbonates during DHST, well-developed reef deposits, and still some shoal and sands being deposited. And actually mass transport deposits are possible at any stage as suggested on this, uh, on this diagram. Now, specifically looking at the subsurface of Oman and the Schwaiba formation, we see that we have some really interesting feature popping up into the seismic here. I'm talking about clinoforms. You can, if you follow these reflectors, you can see we have beautiful prograding clinoforms, which really indicates that carbonate production exceed accommodation change at this stage, and that we're essentially feeling the, the, uh, the accommodation in the basin and prograding uh, our carbonate system. Now these clinoforms are low angle, they're only half of a degree in terms of dip, but nevertheless they can be spotted here in this uh, seismic profile. They can even be seen on seismic amplitude map. And again, this is a spectacular example of those Schweiber aged clinoform, so you can just just about make up the edge of the clinoform on this amplitude map and how they prograde. So beautiful details you can get from the seismic, and this co corresponds perfectly well with our theoretical knowledge of how carbonates would react during an HST. So looking at a block diagram of what to expect during the HST on the um, in, in the Schweiber, we see that uh, when you go closer to the Al Hukuf High where I'm standing now, you start to form some important algal rudistic uh, biostorm. So, in other words, you have rudist, um, rudist bioherms mixed with algal deposits in the shallow water close to the continent. And as you move towards the uh, the basin and in, into the intrashelf basin, we first have a lagoon with orbitulina, which we can see in the cliffs behind me. Lots of orbitulina can be found there. 
And we also have, as we move much closer from the basin, so that means from the Al Hukuf, you'd have to drive about 200 kilometer towards the, uh, the open ocean. But then you start to see the actual barriers, which are made of different Rudist, but these are Rudist mount complex. And then eventually you get into the intershelf uh, carbonate mud and the slope of this system. So we have some examples here of the uh, Rudis that you can find closer to the continent. This is a spectacular outcrop close to where I stand, where uh, it's known as the Siwan outcrop and the Siwan Rudis. And these rudists are effectively in live position. And you can see their spectacular bivalves with two valves that are very asymmetrical, a long valve in which the animal lives and a smaller valve on top that can open and close because they, they had this for protection. So these are the, the rudists that live uh, closer to the shore. And we also have evidence for transport of sediment. We think these were storm um, events, but we see prograding, uh, progradation of uh, skeletal shoal. Now the, the debris in these uh, skeletal shoals are rudist fragments and other fragments. And if you look at, um, if you go to another part of Oman, closer to the Oman mountains, you are closer to the shelf edge and there the rudists are quite different. So these are nearly in life position, but these really form the shelf edge. Like I said, they protect the rest of the system from the wave energy. And in some places you can see fragments of rudists that clearly have been transported because of the very strong wave energy. They're fragmented, they're transported, they're no longer in place. Maybe they're a few tens of meters, maybe a few hundreds of meters behind where they used to grow on the reef. And all of this can be seen here in the Lower Cretaceous of Oman. It's a spectacular place to visit. If you ever have the opportunity, I highly encourage you to do so. So now let's sum up what happens to the Schwaiba Formation. Well, the Schwaiba Formation starts with a, an initial drowning on top of an, of an unconformity. And this drowning gives rise to Lithocodmium bacinella dominated facies. That's the algae I was talking about. That's the pinkish color here. And at first, we basically just have a ramp situation. Notice that I've put the location of the Al Hukuf High, where we stand today, and the Babs Basin. And you can see that the Babs Basin is no basin at all at, at the moment. It's maybe a bit deeper, but it's not very pronounced. Now, as sea level is rising, what happened is the Bacinella Mounds can't really keep up with the rate of sea level rise because they don't actually produce that much sediments. They're living in probably stressed conditions. So they tend to form mounds, like their name indicate. That's the TST. Whereas in Al Hukuf, because we're close to, to the continent, there is no problem. The carbonates can just retreat to that basement high. The basement high was never fully covered and just form, you know, uh, tidal flats and, and uh, basically TST types of deposits. But the important point is because we're not filling accommodation, we are creating now a proper basin. Now the Bob's Basin is probably about 50, 60 meter deep, whereas it was only a few meter deep at the start of this uh, process. Then on top of the mound, during the HST, we have establishment of the, uh, the, the rudists. And now we have a rudist colony on top of the highs that the, the, uh, the lithocodmium mounds were creating. So those mounds essentially form the substrate for the rudist to grow later in this process during the HST. And the next logical thing is that because uh, we are at the HST and because we have so much production on the, um, on the, the rudists, the basin, the mini basin between Redis Mounts will be filled with prograding sediment. So you have lots of evidence for the, these um, clinoformal structure, both inside and outside of the platform. That's why we saw so many of those clinoform edge on the amplitude map I have showed you before. 